Hey everyone, uh, what we have here is a couple of more modules from the Grass Polygraph system that I've been slowly taking apart and scrapping. Now these are probably going to be the last two modules that I will be looking at. Um, we've covered pretty much everything, um, but I will be having a look at the, uh, the pens and the mechanical drivers for, for all the chart recorder and stuff. That I should be doing hopefully sometime next week. Um, and at the same time, I'm actually going to take my Variac over to where the polygraph is stored and I will have a go at powering it up nice and gently and uh, see if we can get anything out of it. Um, it'd be nice to do that because some of these controls might actually become a little bit clearer uh, when we can actually turn it on and actually see how things actually work. So the module I have on the top here, um, this is um, a low-level DC preamplifier. Um, this is installed into the, the main DC driver amplifier. We've seen this, this bit before, uh, previously. Um, this bit we haven't seen. Um, this is a, a low-level DC preamp, uh, model number 7P1D. Uh, the driver amplifier is the 7DAEF. Now, I'm not actually going to take this apart here and now. What I'm going to do is package this up, and I'm going to send it off to a very friendly chap in Australia and hopefully he can do a quick tear down on it um, in his mailbag section. So uh, hopefully Dave from EV Blog will be uh, will appreciate the uh, retro buttons uh, and all this sort of old school old school tech. So let's get this out of the way. So this particular module um, is uh, from my possibly working one. Um, it's called an EEG amplifier for data processing. And the model number is 7P511G. Now, as I mentioned previously um, about these particular modules, is uh, I'm not really sure how these work or what they actually connect to. Um, there's, uh, there's an external calibration um, input here. Um, no other inputs or outputs apart from these two 3.5mm um, um, jacks here. Uh, which is simply data in and data out. Uh, we have a, a J7 connection there, I'm not sure what that's for. So I'm not entirely sure what these are for. I think it's kind of for signal conditioning um, of the, um, the inputs uh, from the actual main polygraph section, which is then sent out to something else. Um, there's no other means to be able to record the, um, the data for processing. You know, obviously you, you can't have uh, data processing without being able to record it. Now, obviously, normally you have the chart recorder, so this is obviously something else. So whether it gets recorded onto magnetic tape or something, I'm not entirely sure. It'd be interesting to know. So over on the left-hand side here, we have a, a calibration button. Um, presumably there is a battery inside this. I've not actually looked in this yet. Uh, we've got an external input, I think that's for calibration. Um, this is, seems to be another calibration slash use button um, selection. So um, you put it into a calibration mode and then once it's, you've calibrated it, you can then put it into the use position um, and then actually use it. Um, again, we've got some similar controls that we saw on some of the other, other modules. Half amp, low frequency. Um, interesting, it says full time constant under here now. So that is selectable between um, 0.1 and 30 hertz. So I think that's uh, some kind of filter. Um, we have sensitivity, which is selectable um, in microvolts per millimeter and millivolts per centimeter. Um, that runs from um, 75 to one. So presumably you can select that as um, yeah, 30 microvolts or 30 millivolts. And the next section along is uh, equalizer. That's part of the um, sensitivity control. Um, we have a, another 50 hertz line filter selection. So you can switch that in and out. We've got a baseline position again, um, which we see on the main um, DC driver amplifier. Um, and we have another half amp high frequency uh, with another uh, rise time constant. So 
Again, I think this is another kind of filter, low frequency filter, high frequency filters. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, we have a selection here called pens, um, and that's labelled in 30, 60, and 90 hertz. Um, exactly what that is for, I'm not entirely sure. And we have another 50 hertz filter. Um, the power switch, the indicators for the uh, plus and minus 12 volts, and the input, output, and then this uh, J7 connection here. Around the back, we have the uh, the normal connector, which supplies uh, power and the signals to the distribution board. Uh, we've got uh, same as the uh, driver amplifiers. We've got two fuses, one for the plus and one for the minus supplies. We've got a high and low switch, um, dampening adjustment, J5 BLP. That'll be baseline position. J5 sensitivity, J5 and J6. Um, connection sockets, J6 level and a strobe in. And over on the far right we have um, 1.3 volt calibration um, test points and a unused connector. Now this is the same connector that which actually goes to the um, the inputs that come directly from the patient. But uh, importantly these are actually mounted in the actual um, back of the rack unit. So you'd actually have to take off the rear panels and connecting the the plug onto the back here to actually access them so it's obviously not meant to be um, accessed very often so overall construction of this is very similar to the other units um, it's a 19 inch rack mount the um, everything's um, pressed and uh, stamped out aluminium sheets uh, which everything just slides on and off so we'll just take this uh, securing screw out here and we will see what's on the inside. Right, so my initial thoughts are that these two boards look suspiciously like um, some of the other boards in the other modules. Um, this one here looks very much like the uh, board that's in the uh, main driver amplifier. Um, with possibly that um, that one amp op amp that um, that Sean B pointed out, um, this uh, looks pretty familiar. To be honest, I think that has been in that's similar to one that we've seen before in one of the other modules. So looks like they're possibly reusing stuff and or repurposing it. Um, this one hasn't got anywhere near as much stuff installed on it. So yes, it does all look fairly similar. Um, note there's a whole load of 1%. Uh, all these um, these resistors here, the sort of cyan aquamarine colour ones, they're all 1% resistors, 10k 1%, 10k 1%, 100k 1%. We have a uh, another um, little cell here. That's looking rather crusty um, so I'll probably have to take that out like the other ones um, stop it leaking and we have all the uh, the wafer switches up at the front loaded with uh, mostly resistors we've got um, two ICs here these are Motorola MC 1303Ls uh, they're dated 10th 73 and um, I can't quite see that one a single channel audio power output amplifier so they're just uh, box standard audio power amps and over on the other section here we have uh, another one of these G1C-100s um, uh, one thing I have noticed is there is quite a number of components which seem to be tagged with G1C uh, I'm not sure whether that's significant, uh, whether they're custom parts or something, or maybe they're being uh, remarked. Uh, so we've got uh, more wave switches, more selection switches, those uh, LEDs um, for the power status, and um, the fuses and the adjustment pot. And we've got a couple of more of those um, LM741s that we've seen before. 
Right, I can't really see anything much more to see in this, so I'm going to call it quits there. Okay, thanks for watching everybody. Um, I will see you on the next one. Catch you later.